Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael, and I've completed a card mock-up of Station Road, the latest major build on my N-Gage model railway set in West Yorkshire in 1993. I always start a build like this with a cheap card mock-up so that I can see what the whole thing will look like once I've finished before I start spending a lot of time building it. So what have I learned with this mock-up and am I ready to start building? In this video I answer these questions and many more posed by viewers over the first four parts of this series. Join me then for Questions Answered – Building Station Road Part 5. My first impression of the mock-up is that it's exactly what I wanted. So that's a good start. As a reminder, the lower part is based on a sequence of buildings on Otley Road in Shipley that were once part of a brewery, I believe. And the upper part is the bottom section of Brook Street in Ilkley. By using two real streets, the buildings on them should already feel naturally right together, and I think that the two separate parts do look good in situ. The real streets are not as steeply sloped as Station Road, but I think the cascade down the hill has worked out well. A stroll down here, once all the shop fronts are in place, should look spectacular. I love the stepped nature of the roofs here. One of the benefits of showing my ongoing work on YouTube is all of the constructive, encouraging, challenging and educational comments that I get. And this build, only four parts in, has been no different. I've selected a few recurring themes in this video, and I'll share my thoughts to address them all. Are you sure you want to have a four-storey building with a tall roof on the corner? Yes. This seemingly random tall building in Shipley has fascinated me for years, and I've always intended to make it. It does look odd, especially partway up the hill, but then so does the prototype. It will add a lot of character to the street, and slow panning shots over the rooftops of Station Road into the station area will be made all the better by its inclusion. One wrong move with your arm could destroy a cardboard structure before you know it. You may want to reinforce that building with wood. This was an interesting idea. The tower looks tall in the scale of the layout, but it is only 13 centimetres, so it's not as large as you might think. The construction of these buildings uses many layers of laminated card, and they are very, very sturdy. An errant elbow may knock off a chimney pot or even a chimney stack, but other than that, I'm confident that the building would survive a knock. It's looking great. How tall is the tower? From the middle of the street, it's 132 millimetres, 19.5 scale metres, or 64 scale feet, whichever is your preference. I showed last week how I drew the mock-up for the bottom building. I used three colours, green, blue and purple, to help me differentiate the different parts of the building. This is intended to be one single building, just like the real thing in Shipley. The difference in Chandwell is that the left side has been converted into two shop units. If they are to read as separated parts of a former hall, there needs to be more common features, albeit in different paint. This is good advice, and it is indeed what I'll be doing. I think you're referring to the bay windows on the right not being present on the left. This is actually the same in Shipley. The blue tower is not a separate building, but is rather the entrance to the large pub. In Shipley, we can see it stepped back against the left side and proud of the right. This is the same in Chandwell, and the building will look as close to this as I can make it. The property line rises vertically, and the roof of purple cannot extend on top of next door. It just looks wrong to me. I've given some serious thought to this comment, but I've decided that I think the roof looks good. The real roof in Shipley is even more complex than I've made it in Chandwell. In Google Earth we can see the three separate parts of the hall. It's like one part has been absorbed into the other, with the side of the tower's roof becoming some kind of hipped roof on the side of the left building. Each part is stepped back from the one to its left, and the leftmost part overlaps the tower part here. With the ridge line at the same height, the roof is something like this but because of the difference in ground height, I've simplified it. I am really happy with it, and I think that this complex roof line will add interest and just a little hint of Shipley. Folding bits of cereal packet is not as accurate as cutting and gluing individual card components, but the street does seem to overlap the ends a little too far. This is probably because of the folded nature of the mock-ups, but maybe I will reduce the overall length of the street by 4mm. The difference will be almost imperceptible. Each building will have 0.16 of a millimetre taken off each side. This will allow more forgiveness for error as I work my way up the hill. Less Inkscape, more hands-on! My demonstrations of Inkscape are always a love it or hate it moment. For every comment I get that appreciates my Inkscape demos, I get one that asks me to stop them. For now, I'm going to continue to mix it in when I find it appropriate. 
Those who appreciate Inkscape, I hope it continues to be useful to you. Those who don't, please just fast forward or come back the week after. Watch out in future for a separate and dedicated Inkscape series where I'll take you from absolute beginner to someone who's completed a building using the same techniques as I do. I'm guessing with the mock-ups in place, you're also starting to get a sense of what the sight lines will be. I've always strived to show the railway within the town and for that, the viaduct needs to be penned in on both sides with buildings. Just imagine spying the moving trains between these buildings. Or the panning shot over the chimney tops to see the latest departure to Huddersfield. The layout is waist height to me, which means that as I operate it, or simply walk past, I see the entire scene. The station is hemmed in on all sides by buildings and the town looks busy and bustling. I can choose how to present it, like this, or like this, and I think that both will look brilliant. Looks good! Will they have basements at the rear? I'm glad you mentioned the rear. Look, just by simply leaning over ever so slightly, you can see right down Station Alley, past the backs of the street, and right down to the curved rear courtyard of the Earl Chanfield. Each of these buildings will have rear features and stories to tell. The backs are as important as the fronts. I hadn't actually thought about basements though. The narrow pub will have cellar steps at the front, but I have the depth available to make many a cellar round the back if I want. I'll give that some thought when it comes to the individual buildings. I have seen streets with doors starting with two steps up, going to one step down to get into shops as you go up the hill. Ah, another excellent point, and something I've overlooked. You'll see for now, I've drawn all the shop fronts exactly the same using a basic template, and I've drawn the doors level with the road. I've also forgotten to account for the 1mm height of the pavement, and I should also include some steps. So I think I'll nudge the buildings up a millimetre or two to allow scope for these. Stagger the buildings of different heights would make the scene more interesting. A couple of you noticed that although the street is going downhill, the roof line from here to here is more or less horizontal. The buildings on Brook Street in Ilkley get taller from right to left, and because it's the same in Chandwell, their overall roof line looks static. I did wonder about swapping the order around a bit, but now I've seen it in situ, I think it's another interesting quirk that actually makes it more rather than less interesting. You said that the last block of shops were the very first shops designed with residential above in Chandwell. Can I ask where their front doors are? The four buildings at the end of Brook Street are thought to be the first commercial buildings with accommodation above to have been built in Ilkley, and so that's the same in Chandwell. And just like Brook Street, none of them have access at the front. Boots is the only premise in this sequence with a front entrance to what I assume is upstairs. The entrances to the accommodation must be round the back. I've not taken a look round there in any detail yet, but I do intend to model Chandwell to match Ilkley in this regard. Have you decided not to take advantage of the depth of the hole with a gap non-building hole in the ground? This is a really difficult question. A gap would look good. Torn wallpaper hanging off the old interior walls. Timber bracing holding up the buildings either side. A deep hole full of rubbish. But I simply love Station Road as it is. I really can't decide on this one. Watch this space and we'll find the answer together in the coming months. A bit more work to do, but I'm ready to start. I'll start at the bottom of the street and work my way up. Who knows what twists and turns await, but before we go, there's just one more comment to address. Nice voice, and always nice explanations, but I see your videos for the layout, and not for the face of the person behind it. Please change, if possible. If you enjoyed this episode, please press that thumbs up for me. Join me next week to see the start of the building proper. Until then then, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time. Brilliant.